Boot sales are basically finished. What am I gonna do as a full-time reseller? Boot sales, boot sales, boot sales. That's what it's mostly been on this channel for the past year or so, maybe. Obviously, a lot going on. As you can see, new surroundings, etc., etc. Been quite busy, busy boy. But I'm pretty sure boot sales season is pretty much finished for me now. But obviously, as you know, I'm a full-time reseller. This is my main income. What am I to do during the off season? And what am I to do on this YouTube channel? It's time to go back to when I first started. We used to do different series, different bits and bobs, covering different niches and areas of reselling. We're gonna hit it back hard now. We're starting a new series on this channel. That's right. Not one been done before. Revolutionary. Throughout this autumn and winter, I'm gonna try and go around all the different types of ways to source products to then obviously resell on the internet. Mostly eBay, Depop, Facebook, Vinted if you're still allowed, Etsy, etc, etc. Many different ways, not just boot sales like this channel is heavily based on, but we've got charity shops, we've got jumble sales, we've got auctions, we've got wholesale, we've got... I don't know. I'm gonna go away and hit one of these places to obviously try and find stock to resell on. Bit of footage and that and then report back here, go see what I picked up through that day and then we're gonna grade. We're gonna have a scoreboard and everything that like we used to back in the charity shop championship days. Might bring that back also. We're gonna grade each event on five different points. I've come up with the competition that was there, so fellow resellers and buyers, etc. The time and effort it took to do this event. Cost of goods, the quality of the goods, like the names, the brands, etc. Along with that, number five, the condition. Go mark them out of 10, each one, and then we'll spit out an average at the end out of 10 or add them all up, I don't know. Put them in a leaderboard and we'll see what is the ultimate way to resell stock? So today, episode one, the first one. Already filmed it, filmed it ages ago. I keep putting this off, I need to crack on with this. Number one, jumble sales. I haven't been to a jumble sale since COVID years. This is the first one I've ever been to. That was my local one. There is about three a year. I don't know when they brought it back, but I think they started actually last year. I missed all them last year. This year they've done three jumble sales at the same place throughout the year. I've missed the previous two and I managed to make the last one of this year. Finally, since I think 2019 was my last jumble sale and I went back. We'll see how we get on, run the footage. I'll see you back here in a minute. Nice. Here is big. It's a jump out mission. Drop and go. Right, see you in a minute. Back at a queue. Okay, now. you asking on that one? Yeah. And, yeah, I'll grab that one, please. Hi. Hi, and, thanks for that. Oh, Oops, sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. How much are the shoes? A pound. A pound, okay. I get them ones. Yeah. Okay. I've got no way of it. I get them as well. Yeah. So two pairs, yeah. There's two. Lovely, thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Can I see the sheepskin coat? Yeah. yeah. It's heavy. How much is that one, is that? Too good. Yeah, I'll get on. It wouldn't be in a bag, would it? Right, there are a couple of bags over there, actually. Oh, cool. There's no bags on the floor. Don't you think it's 
Sunglasses. Yeah. 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 No wonder they were banned during COVID. I, there was a time in 2020, 2021 when I thought jumble sales would never exist again. Imagine being in 2021, like close to this people, like barging, like <coughs> in people's faces. But they're back and oh, that was overwhelming. There's so many people there. We'll get onto the gradient in a minute. We'll do a little haul. Show you what I've got, show you what I've got. So you have to sharpen your elbows, get involved, get in there, get on the tables. I'm surprised this stuff was still there because I thought as soon as I'm stepping in people are just taking all the good stuff so there's gonna be nothing but we should get a little haul. It's obviously not the biggest haul but we'll start with whatever I grab first. Shoe table. A pair of nice vintage brown leather shoes but they were made in Italy. I think I'm pretty sure this was a few weeks ago now. This is literally four weeks after that jumble set we just saw. I'm pretty sure it was 50p or a pound maximum for the shoe table. Not gonna be worth a whole lot of money, but a hell of a lot more than 50p or a pound. Also, on the shoe table, a pair of walking boots. Got Mountain Life waterproof walking shoes, trainers, boots, whatever. Plenty of tread left, no wear and tear. Just needs a bit of a baby wipe, maybe, just to get them looking clean, ready for the pictures. Yeah, probably the same price range, 20, 25, maybe a little bit more, maybe Pushing 27, 28, 99 plus postage. Now we got, so, oh my God, these are worse than I thought. <laughs> pair of sunglasses. I believe they're a Nike ones. Definitely Y2K, early 2000s. Couldn't say no to these at like 20p or 50p, whatever it was. You got a nice Nike swoosh on the side, both sides. But I don't know if you can tell or see, the glass is heavily sort of scratched and like cracks forming, but there's a film on the glass or on the plastic. So you can hardly see out of them, but for like Y2K era sunglasses, Nike as well, which is really cool. I couldn't say no. They would have to be re-lensed if that's such a thing. But um, yeah, I wasn't leaving them behind. It's so cool. Vintage Nike, I was picking them up. Price wise, in this condition, probably like eight to 10 pound. But if they were Crisp and clear, nice and clean, good condition. Whoa, hello. Probably more up to 20 quid, maybe a little bit more, but yeah, really cool to find. Bit of vintage Nike and a jumble. Wicked. Onto the clothes table. A couple of items on the clothes table. Found, it was literally a mountain. Just, you have to fight people. You have to just get involved. There's no order at all. There's a couple of pieces on the back wall that I picked up. But yeah, found this one. It's just a random t-shirt, uh, Key West. Florida but the reason I picked it up looking at all the arms good tip if you are looking into clothing single stitch which means vintage and obviously single stitch is a big keyword to put when you are listing on eBay Depop wherever you're selling because that means genuine like it's old basically also on the print it does say is that 93 yeah 1993 right there so it's just a simple single stitch vintage 90s t-shirt. 50p, whatever it was, probably like 18.99. I probably priced that at 19.99 plus postage. I haven't actually looked these up, but on the same table, there's trousers, jeans, there's everything going on. Got just a pair of work trousers. Again, 50p in the rush. I just grabbed them. Uh, these are Panopoly. Is that is it? Panopoly, Panopoly. Size large, so probably like 34 inch to 36 inch waist. Yeah, just work cargo type trousers, 50p. Haven't actually looked them up yet, so I'm gonna look them up right now. So just looked it up now, not the best pickup, but still making profit from 50p. About 14.99 plus postage. They had a few bits hanging up, like I said, and this was one of them. Got a nice vintage heavy sheepskin coat. This was a whole, was this two pounds? I think I had to pay two pounds for this one, maybe three pounds, pushing a boat out. So yeah, just hanging up, just saw it. 
I'm normally quite picky with these. There was a time I was picking these up, getting good money, but once they're folded up, like in storage, especially if you've got minimal space, that's quite a lot of space for one item in a box. It takes up like nearly half the box sometimes. So yeah, I am more picky, but I knew it's gonna be cheap. I saw all the buttons were there. It's nice and clean. Doesn't stink of like cigarette smoke or anything like that. I'm not sure, I've not heard of it, but made in England in Nottingham. There you go. Again, looks a nice, sort of bigger size, maybe a large to that one, maybe a medium. Uh, yeah, they can linger, but we are early autumn, mid autumn now, I should say. So obviously this is more of a winter coat. It's suddenly getting a bit colder. So three pound, hopefully, hopefully 30 to 40. I'd like to think plus postage on top. Look at this, proper 1980s, 1990s ski suit. Just hanging up on the women's side this time. And this was, two or three pound, again, this is, ne <laughs> why can't I pronounce any brands? Nevika, 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 Nevika. <laughs> Don't tell Nevika. UK 44 medium, 44M, proper 1990s, I'd say. Purple, pink, turquoise, teal, yellow, all the bright colors going on. And again, condition is looking good. Again, it was hanging out for everyone to see. I didn't get to this women's table till like two minutes in, which is late. And I was at the back of the queue like I usually am. So I was surprised that I was still just sitting there. Ski suits, I usually get, well, I used to get, I haven't picked one up for a while, probably a year and a half or so. Usually get about 40 to 50. That little haul there cost me about seven pound 50, eight pounds, and it was 20p or 30p to get in. It was like random. I gave him a 50p, so I'm nice like that. So all in all, I've spent under a tenner on that little haul there. And approximate listing value, obviously before best offers, before fees and all that malarkey, don't come at me. Listing value around 170 to 180 from under a tenner spent. That's some, that's some good jumbling. Number one, I've got competition. Obviously, as you saw, lots and lots of competition. There was people everywhere, up in the grill, under my armpits, behind me, underneath me. There's literally, literally people underneath me, under the table, people over the top trying to get on top of the clothes pile. Manic. So when it comes to a score out of 10, obviously if I'm adding up the score and the highest score will be the winner, obviously the more competition, the lower the score I'm guessing. So competition in one room with a limited amount of stock with the maximum amount of people in there. Competition might have to be like the worst score. So one out of 10. I don't know how it could get any worse because there's literally, I was at the back of the queue, I was there 20 minutes tops and all the good stuff's gone. Yeah, if you literally, if I'm at the back of the queue, someone's at the front of the queue, they've got enough time to go around the whole hall before I even step foot in there. So yeah, competition, we're starting off with a one out of 10. The time and effort involved into doing this event. So the time, obviously there's a strict time. It started at quarter past two on the dot and the doors opened and then time and effort. So I was in and out, like I said, in like 20 minutes, I could have gone sooner. I think within 10 minutes I was done. And then the effort, again, haven't had to get up early like a boot sale, just on a Saturday afternoon. But then the effort, if you've got social anxiety or things like me basically, then you're gonna struggle. It's gonna be a bit more mental effort really. Not phys well, physical as well, because bloody elbows get in there, get out of the way. But so the mental effort as well of, yeah, if you suffer from claustrophobia, social anxiety, stuff like that, it's gonna be a bit more of a strain than if, you don't mind all that stuff. I'm gonna go over, yeah, eight on that one. But then with the effort, see when it comes to effort, time and effort, it wasn't really that much effort, just obviously the mental effort. Uh, with time and effort, number two, a seven. Cost of goods. As you saw, I spent under a tenner on like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my average buying price is about a pound an item-ish, if not, about 90p an item for a whole ski suit, a sheepskin coat, some quality leather shoes. There can't be anything but a 10 out of 10 for cost of goods, unless I was getting the stuff for free. Maybe you, you could get stuff for free. I need to think about this. Cause 10 is like, there's no room for improvement. The room for improvement would be like getting stuff for free. So I'm gonna say, unless it's free, it's gonna be a nine and a half. The next best thing to get it for free. Nine and a half. Cost of goods. Four, the quality. When I mean quality, I mean like the brands. So we're talking like high-end brands like clothing, like Burberry, Vintage Nike, DMs, Lokes, 
just like, yeah, the quality of the brands and the names that I'm picking up. We've got Mountain Life, Sheepskin Coat, a random t-shirt. We have got the vintage Nike sunglasses. So we've got a bit of vintage Nike there, but then I have the other ones, like Panoply. Pan I don't know what it was, but random work trousers, a random t-shirt, a company I haven't heard of, sheepskin coat. This was quite good, like good quality, like vintage quality. So there is some stuff, there's no, like I didn't go in on the electronic section and there was Denon, like Hi-Fi, or like some quality speakers, Mission speakers, or Sony, this and that. Um, didn't actually get any of the bric-a-brac stuff because there was literally just tat. I'm gonna say quality, not quite there. Gonna go five, there you go. I was holding it up. Quality of goods, some decent stuff, but when it comes to brands and higher end, not always there, but decent. Me in the middle, five. And then the condition, now. The stuff I picked up is obviously in good condition, but on the sh especially the shoe table, there was some shockers. There was like soles falling off, there was holes, rips, tears. Like I showed you, this pair of leather shoes. Decent, obviously there is somewhere like there is meant to be, really, once you've worn a pair of shoes. Yeah, there are some that all the way worn through and that's like a common theme. So what I got, I'm surprised none of the things did have like a broken zip or a missing button because you're gonna get that stuff. But the condition of the stuff I did, I don't know, sunglasses. I can't even see through the sunglasses because again, it's just stuff that people have donated, like local families. I was not going to get any return. It's just for their cause of the scouts or the church, whatever. So, um, yeah, condition, lots of stuff that had holes in that in it. Um, but the stuff I did get for the majority, decent. But I'm going to go with a score overall, four out of 10 for condition. So now I need to remember what I just scored everything. And we'll <coughs> spit a score out at the end. I've added up all the scores. So we've got a score of 26 and a half for jumble sales. So obviously maximum score is 50. We're hitting 26 and a half, so in the middle of the 50 obviously. So there you go. Put it in the graph. Yeah, 26 and a half. Obviously middle, probably not the strongest score, I think. But then thinking about what's to come, like the boot sales and that, there's pros and cons to every different event. Let's move that over there. And that is jumble sales done. First one since COVID. It was good to be back. More overwhelming than what I remember. Yeah, I'm really happy with what I got. So like I said, this is the start of a new series. If there's things that you want me to include throughout this autumn and winter, so the ones I'm thinking of, obviously we've done jumble sales, booze sales, charity shops, auctions, wholesale. Then I'm struggling with things, probably private picking, but I'm not sure how I'd do that. If you can think of one that I haven't mentioned that you want to see me score and go to and all that good stuff, yeah, whack it down in the comments below. I'll be reading every comment. Yeah, the start of a brand new series. Hopefully it goes well. We'll see how it goes. Obviously it's a benefit for me because I get to go to all these different places and I get to find cool stuff to sell anyway. That's what I'll be doing anyway. Just not in a boot sale field. Until next time, sell lots.